manufacturers in the world. Confusion, uncertainty, threats, exemptions, deals, no deals, deadlines, extensions, exceptions, counter threats. What is going on? I think parts of the administration are thinking strategically, and other parts are thinking strategically in a different way, and it adds up to no strategy. It's a house divided. Peter Navarro is the director of the White House National Trade Council. He's in favor of direct and sustained confrontation. We're not sure, the United States doesn't seem to be sure what we're trying to accomplish. So the tactics of putting China or other countries off balance, I think that's worked fine. But if you don't know what you're trying to win, then you can't win. Those with a more traditional approach to global trade include U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin and Director of the National Economic Council Larry Kudlow. The president said this many times, he wants a deal that will help America. The men who died. Donald Trump has been threatening to impose tariffs on billions of dollars of imports on individual sectors like steel and aluminum, while threatening to tear up existing arrangements with large trading partners like China, the European Union and Mexico. The official responsible for threatening tariffs for the purpose of renegotiating trade under former U.S. President Ronald Reagan was Michael Zincota. As a tool for attention, as a tool for sitting down, really thinking through that what are the reality concerns, I think tariffs get, get that attention. But I would be amazed if there would be a broad blanket implementation of tariffs. For now, it appears that the U.S. is backing away from a damaging trade war approach. China says it's agreed to further open up its markets to U.S. agricultural products while negotiations continue. On Capitol Hill, Republican Senator Ben Sass says the tendency to blame global trade for the decline of traditional industries is missing the point. In the mid-1950s, the high-water mark of U.S. industrial employment in history, about 31% of the American labor market worked in factories. Today, it's what? It's about 7%, and we have more total output. That is, that is a function of technology overwhelmingly, not trade, and we should absolutely be thinking about what it looks like to live in a society where we don't have lifelong work anymore, but most of that problem is not about trade. So what's clear for now? is that these clouds of uncertainty will remain hovering over this White House, as will the threat of sanctions hanging over the heads of America's largest trading partners. Daniel Wrenches, CGTN, Washington.